Dontrell Willis looking to become the National League's first 12-game winner on Thursday, while his Marlin teammates were just hoping, hoping to touch the plate in Atlanta. They'd been outscored 13 to nothing the first two games of the series. Meanwhile, Matt Morris is back to his baffling self. Last year, his ERA was a career-high 4.72. This season, he's about a run and a half better and has the chance to become only the fourth National League pitcher in 20 years to start the season 9-0. and We begin with the man his teammates called D-Nice on the bump, but only 1-2 and two in his career against the Braves, but he was flowing in this one. Here, Rafael Fercal goes down swinging. Miguel Cabrera, monster night, 4 for 5. This two-run shot gave the Marlins a three-love lead. That, would all, that was all the... Dontrell needed on cruise control. That's Pete Orr. That's for call again. And this is Kelly Johnson. They all K. Seven in the game for him. Here in the top of the seventh, Willis a great bunt, but then the head first slide down the line extends his hitting streak to six games. His teammates said they would discuss the slide with him after the game. And here we are in the ninth. Let's go 6 4 3. Willis gets his 12th win, his third shutout of the year. Bobby Cox said he's the dominant pitcher in the National League right now. I'd say so. Willis in complete control. What about Matt Morris looking to get to 9 and 0 at home against uh, Pittsburgh? Bottom one, Albert Pujols. E hard. Solo shot is 19th, and the Cardinals have given Morris the early lead. It's 1 0. Morris, 8 0 and 12 starts coming in, and that was about all the help he got. Defensive support lacking, sorely lacking behind him. Top three, Jack Wilson. To left, Reggie Sanders drops the ball. Morris was gone only two batters into the fourth. Gave up six runs. However, only three were earned. Pirates win 11-7. So Matt Morris loses for the first time this season. Pods have won four or five, wrapping up a four-game set with L.A. They had a three-run lead into the eighth, but then Almedo Sides rips the shot in the left, and two runs come in to score. On Damian Jackson's bad throw home. They get three in the eighth through the Dodgers, and we are tied up on that number. In the tenth, Trevor Hoffman to Cesar Asturias, who is hustling all the way on this shot into right center, and he gets the double. Would later score on a Jeff Kent sacrifice fly. L.A. up 4-3. Bottom 10, two out. Sean Burrows at the dish. And he stings one the other way to third. Tying run. No, no, no. That's it, and that's all. Dodgers win for just the second time in 10 games. College-style elimination game at Rosenblatt, Arizona State. Facing those Gators, winner advances to the national title series in its 3-0 Sun Devils. And then Brian LeClaire out of Clearwater, Florida, gets the Gators on the board. It's 3-2, bottom five, 3-2, runners on first and third. Nobody out. Brett Bordas gets roughed up by Adam Davis. It's great to be a Florida Gator. That's what they say in Gainesville. And the Gators move on to face Texas in the national title series. At home this season, Jorge Cantu having none of it. His second home run of the game, his second multi-homer game of the week. This guy's got 11 home runs. The Devil Rays take a 4-2 uh -oh. lead. You know what he is? He's a Yankee killer. There you go. The, uh, Yankee. <laughs> Top five. Cantu with the dish. We're now tied at four. Nick Green on third. You don't see this too often. Derek Jeter. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, oh Jambi can't get it. Green scores from third. Tampa Bay takes a 5-4 lead. Bottom eight. Tampa Bay leads 6-4. Ruben Sierra at the dish trying to play Johnny Drama. Danny Bias. Johnny Drum, Johnny Drum, oh, the looks, noise uh, bias. Looks more like Turtle here, yeah, actually. Yeah, grounds out. Only the second series win in 21 Yankee Stadium visits for the Devil Rays. <laughs> Division leading Orioles in Toronto. A, facing Roy Halladay, whom Baltimore had beaten twice already this season. Top three gets Miguel Tejada with two on in a big spot. Then Halladay gets Sammy, who was 0 for 4. And Larry Bigby, he goes down. He's looking like a Cy Young win here. David Newham. Roy Halladay, dazzling. Top six, Rafael Palmero. Aaron Hill comes up with a great diving play. Halladay allowed just two runs on seven hits in eight. He struck out eight, and the Blue Jays beat the Orioles 6 2. Halladay gets to 11 and 4 this year. That lead's getting skinned. Series hitting by the dock of the bay. Top one, Luis Gonzalez. Omar Vizquel tags Craig Council, steps on second, throw to first. JT Snow, triple play. No, his foot is off the bag. Gonzalez safe. Giants just missed the triple play. Here it is again. Vizquel off the hop. Council called out of the baseline. One out. Vizquel tag second. Two outs. Third out at first. No. JT's foot was off the bag. Oh, boy. Yeah. Top nine. Troy oh. Gloss <laughs> off Brandon Puffer. His 17th. Diamondbacks win 7-2.
That after Gloss was 0 for 4 with four strikeouts in Wednesday's game. Cubs in Milwaukee. Derek Lee, well, he's just, it's mangoes. He's crazy. 470. Guava. Off Ben Sheets. Here's some guava. His 21st. He also homered in the fourth. He was 3 for 4. He's hitting 395. Yikes. Bottom five, El Caballo. Carlos Lee, two run shot is 20th, and El Caballo ties it up at three. Bottom eight, six, six, Bill Hall waiting on a changeup from Mike Remlinger, sitting on it, and he gets it. Ruled a home run is 11th. Hall was eight for 16 with three homers in the series. Cubs have lost six of eight and eight of 11. Lee. But they got Derek Lee. Yep. He's hitting 464 this month with Good. six homers and 18 RBI. We thought we'd fire up the Sports Center Magic Bus for an interleague road trip across America. But first, let's pull over and pick up my good friend John Anderson. <laughs> He's waiting for a subway. John. That's right. New York, New York, you do the math. That's a big league team for each New York. Mets, Yankees, the subway headed to the stadium, the Bronx for the weekend. And since any player is only as good as his last quote, Match starter Pedro Martinez in for a full night of Who's Your Daddy chants. Folks forgetting that it wasn't all that long ago that Pete so dominated the Yanks that he requested the team wake up the Bambino so he could drill him in his ample backside. Mets lost two or three in the interleague robbery at Shea last month. There's Pete, you know, five days after Father's Day, still a hallmark moment. <laughs> Pedro got stuck in traffic, didn't get to the game except for one hour before tip-off or before first pitch, and actually he should have skipped the whole first batter. Derek Jeter takes him deep. one nothing Yanks, Jeter's 10th, just like that. Let's go to the second inning. Maybe it'll get better for him. Top second, Ramon Castro. Base is loaded. Flat to right. There you go. Simple enough. Marlon Anderson tags. Scores. Sack fly number one in the inning. Next batter, Jose Reyes. Out to center field. Bernie's got it. Bernie's got it. Bernie does not. Kids. This is the last reminder. You use two hands on that ball. Mike Mucino doesn't like it. Sack fly number two in the inning. Now runners, first and second. Mucino tries to pick off. That doesn't go well. And Doug Mankiewicz, yeah, he's over into third. Robinson Cano can not make the play. That air advances him to second and third. And now Mike Cameron, a third sack fly in the inning. Mankiewicz takes and scores. That makes it 3-1 Mets. First time ever a National League team has hit three sack flies in one inning. Certainly a unique feat there for the visiting team. Team. Top five. Mets up four to Carlos Beltran. You knew he was going to homer. Pedro was on the on the bump there. Ninth home of the season for Beltran. Eight coming in starts by Pedro. Well, he ran off into the eighth, letting his man go. Gary Sheffield, pop fly, shallow left. And Cliff Floyd. Again, Cliff, I've told the whole group. Two hands. That one doesn't work out so poorly. He eventually gets the out. Later in the eighth, the Decky Matsui. And Carlos Beltran at the wall. See, that the second hand was right about there. Pedro goes eight innings. Struck out just three lows total ever for him in an eight inning or more start. But he does win it by a count of six to four. So guess what? Daddy, I'm going out. Don't wait up for me. Eighth time that Pedro and Mucina faced off as starter. Pretty even rivalry. Mucina, though, still has the better ERA. And Moose's team still leads the series 5-3. Partly, of course, because the Red Sox didn't used to score a lot of runs for Pedro when he got to the Bronx. Offense not an issue. We hop on the interleague magic bus over to Philly. Red Sox are there. Of course, Terry Francona managed the Phil for four seasons from 97 to 2000. Bottom four, Jim Tomey facing Tim Wakefield down the left field line. Manny Ramirez at the wall. Don Orsillo, your thoughts. We really take the good with the bad. And uh, you think of Manny Ramirez. There are times where you kind of shake your head, but there's other times when Manny makes plays like that. Well, you're right. In fact, let's see more of the memorable Manny moments. Never dull. Some of that behind Tim Wakefield, who tossed eight innings of two-hit ball. And Manny providing some offensive support as well. A three-run shot is 17th. He's got six homers in 10 games. Top nine, big poppy. Say hello, 
Arthur Lilfran. Wicked five. <laughs> is 19, eight nothing. Boston has won five straight and 10 of its last 11 games. You can't hit it much further than you. All right, this used to be Canada's interleague series before the Expos moved to Washington, so we take the bus down to RFK, Blue Jays and Nationals. And we got W and Condi in the house. They got good seats. Top two, they must know somebody. The Imagine O-Dog, that. five, four, three. Spider I understand he's been involved in the game. Esteban Loiza, out of a jam. He worked six scoreless. Bottom two, Loiza into the left field corner. Vinny Castillo scores. They wave Junior Spivey as well. It's a double for Esteban Loiza. And he gives himself a 2-0 lead. Chad Cordero on to close. He converted his last 20 save ops. 3-0 in the ninth. Alex Rios to left. And here comes Marlon Bird. Cordero's 24 save. That's Thompson in the major leagues. The Nationals win 3-0. They've won 11 in a row at home. All right, let's point the boat south. Headed to Atlanta. Orioles and Braves. The O's lead down to half. A game, 20-year-old rookie Aiden Penn, 2-0 on the season. Bottom first one out, one out. Marcus Giles, big swing, headed to the seats. Two-run shot, six of the season. Just like that, 2-1 in favor of the home team. Next batter, Andrew Jones. I mean, come up with something original, right? I mean, if anybody can homer, I guess, huh? That's his sixth whack in seven games, 22 this season. Penn lasted just two innings, seven runs, eight hits. Certainly better days ahead for him, we would think. Top five, Kyle Davies facing Brian Roberts. And Brian Roberts, with his 12th homer, has tied his career. Not his career high, his career. He had 12 coming in, 12 now for the season. That's two dozen total. Rafael Palmero there. What happened? All right, well played defensively. Braves hold on to win at 7-5. So the Orioles drop out of first place in the AL East for the first time since April 22nd. After having lost nine of the last 16 games, they spent 62 straight days in first place, which is nearly twice as many as they did in the previous four seasons combined. Still looking for that first division title since 1997. A lot of games still to play. Headed into Chicago, Pasta at Harry Carey's, Burgers at the Billy Goat, then down the south side for the White Sox. And the Cubs, or as John likes to call them, the Pale Hose. The bottom one hurts Alabama. so good. Off Sergio Mitre, Frank Thomas is seventh of the year. One nothing White Sox. His 443rd career home run passes Dave Kingman for 29th all time. Bottom three, they're loaded. Mitre wild pitch. Scott Fitzsegg scores 3-1 White Sox. Top five, Freddie Garcia had it going. Gets Michael Barrett for one out after he retired. Todd Collinsworthy gets Jason DuBois. Garcia went seven, allowed just a one run on three hits. He struck out eight. Bottom five, A.J. Przinski. So happy to not be a giant. His 11th of the season, that ties a career high. White Sox win 12-2. They've won eight straight baseball games. There was some good news for the Cubs. Kerry, we uh, Kerry Wood continues his rehab assignment with the Iowa Cubs. Pitched five and two-third innings. Allowed four hits, only one run. Walked one, struck out nine. Iowa defeated the Oklahoma Redhawks. 2-1, Wood threw 84 pitches. Bob Euchre best described it, the trip from Chicago to Milwaukee, just an oleo run. Brad Radke of the Twins, no wins in interleague games since July 8th. He's 0 for 5, and Bill Hall trying to keep that streak intact, but Jock Jones throws old Manny Ramirez at him, grabs the out there. You know what? We don't draw it up in the scorebook. We just put down, he's out. Bottom nine, Damian Miller, he's from Sconson. Let's hear it for the kid from lacrosse, his third of the year. Radke still can't get an interleague break. The Brook, who's going to win a 3-1. A reminder, Summerfest begins down there on the Lake Shore next Thursday. John nice. Mellencamp is playing. That's for all, we love to travel. You see where we've been, and now it's off deep in the heart of Texas. You got them big hats. Highlighted hair, credit card millionaires. You got the Rangers and the Astros, and then we'll probably jump on up there to St. Louis. We'll get to that. Roy Oswald and the Astros taking on the Rangers, as we said. Texas swept the three-game series earlier. As you see, they beat them up pretty bad. Outscored them 27 to six. Out hit them in the hit department. Texas hit 10 homers. Houston had only two. Bill Gardner hasn't forgotten. He said they thumped us pretty good. We owe them a little something. There is going to be a little bloodbath here in South Texas. There's, that's right, talk strong. Top second, no score. Richard Dog with the plate. Oswald strikes out Doggy. Oswald went seven and a third, gave up two earned runs. All right, now, Jason Lane, you see him there, he's wearing 24. It's significant because it's the last night he's gonna wear 24. Astros retired Jimmy wins number 24 pregame ceremony on Saturday. There's the man. Play with the Strohs from 63 to 73, and the people still love the toy cannon. 
Bottom third, two out runner on Jason Lane, giving you a little toy cannon right there. Stay fair, stay fair. If it hits the pole, it's fair. It is fair. Now go do that in the Astrodome, huh? Lane will start wearing number 16 on Saturday, 4 0. Favor the Astros. Top nine, two out, five, two, Brad Lidge. Nasty, filthy, all those words in a, in a good way. Doggy goes down again. Astros win at 5 2, Lidge's eighth save. The Hope and Crosby theme continuing the road to St. Louis Cardinals trying to avoid their first four-game losing streak of the season, hosting the Pirates, where the game was delayed 31 minutes because of a fire near the ballpark. Intra-league series here. Both teams established in 1882. The Cardinals have one more World Series. The Pirates have one more head-to-head -head games in the series. Former Pirate Jeff Supon, uh, Freddie Sanchez, top six. Mark Rasselotic, the diving stop in support of Supon, who allowed just one run on five hits and eight in the third, took a two-hitter into the ninth and got more support from Jim Edmonds, his second of the game, 13th of the year. St. Louis wins 8-1. They've beaten the Pirates in 13 of their last 14. We're going to Florida, past Del Boca Vista, and uh, headed for the Marlins Devil Rays. Devil Rays logging some miles of their own uh, back from the Bronx, where they won three of four. But they were great in interleague last year, as you can see. This year, not Stink. so much. They went from 15 and three Stink last old. year, three and 12 coming into this one. Uh, they've scored fewer runns and they've given up a lot more. Top five: Paul Laduca, in center. Damon Holland's coming out of nowhere, full extension. Marlins stuck the landing. They sure did. Marlins were down 4-3 in the eighth. Big spot here. Juan Pierre. They're loaded up. And now they're unloaded. Triples to right center. Pierre's sixth triple of the year. It's a four-run Florida eighth. They win 7-4. Devil Rays improved to 3-13 in interleague play this year. Very confusing now. On we motor up the interstate for another intrastate game between the Reds, Indians. That's in Cleveland. And people think I never started. Oh. Scott Elton going for his fifth straight win. Top two, Ken Griffey Jr. Well, that, that's not going to help poor Scott win again. 2 nothing Indians. Let's have that lead. Make it 2-1, 13th of the year for Jr. Bottom four, tied at three, Jose Hernandez. Swing and a drive. How about two in this game for him? He's got three now on the year. Saved up for just this game. Indians nudge ahead again, 4-3. Top eight score, 4-3. Griffey 0 for 12 against Scott Sauerbeck in his career. And Jr. gets off the schneid second of the game. 515th of his career first multi-homer game. In more than a year for him, it's 4-4. And then Felipe Lopez, tied at four. The ball off the wall. Stays in the park, but it's far enough for William O'Payne to score and give the Reds a 5 Enough 5-4. These doodles just strewn everywhere, and there's only annoying static and gospel stations on the radio. So we may smell bad, but as we roll into San Diego, we've been saved. Nice. It's the Pods of the Mariners. Top five game is knotted up at four. Each row hitting just 241 here in June. Each row lines one to right center, and you know, once he gets on his horse, we're in a bus, once he gets on his horse, he can hump it. How's your gas lamp this Two lefts, and he is in there. Each row breaks out of an 0 for 12 hitless streak with a triple. Next batter, Randy Wynn. All right, he thought, well, that's pretty fun. Ryan Klesko, he's no ball girl out there in left field. Each row scores easily, and we've got back-to-back -back triple. Seattle takes a 5-4 lead. Four batters later, bases Chuck, Brett Boone. Steps to the plate and unloads on Tim Redding. That's going back, 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 and that's down. Win. Adrian Beltre, Richie Sexton start the merry-go-round. They all score. Three bags for Booney. Three triples in an inning. First team to do that since 1997 when the Cubs did it against the Padres. That was May 15th. 14-5 your final M's. Freeway series, L.A. versus L.A. of Anaheim. John Lackey, top five, gets Jason Repko. He's got nasty breaking stuff. Seven shutout innings, gave up only three hits, struck out nine. Bottom five, Jeff Weaver with a perfect game right now. Dallas McPherson pops it up. Antonio Perez, Cesar Turs, and this is how Weaver loses his perfecto? Are you kidding me? McPherson, Not kidding. second. Oh, man. Next up, it's Jeff Devannon. So there goes the perfect game. And there goes the no-hitter, right under Jeff Kent's glove. It's like riding a motorcycle through a car wash. one nothing Angels, the Dodgers just, the wheels fall off, they lose seven zip. There was some good news, though, when Dr. Frank Job opened Eric Gagne's elbow to perform Tommy John surgery Friday. He discovered Gagne didn't need his right elbow ligament replaced after all. After a nip here, a tuck there, Gagne's recovery time was reduced from one year to six months. He might be ready by spring training. All right, Oakland, the last stop for the A's Giants. Final totals interleague here, 6,322 miles, 138 stuckies. Bobby Kilty in the fourth. 
Fifth home run of the year. There were two, uh, one man on, so it's a two run homer. A's lead three nothing. Bottom seven. Jesse Fopper pitching to Nick Swisher. And yeah, get out of the way. He is safe. Top nine, four, three athletics runners on the corners. Justin Dukeshire gets Michael Tucker. Dukeshire is sure happy. Athletics win at four, three. That's the most beautiful ballparks in the major league sports field. I mean, it's gorgeous. There. It's not good for pitching, but it's a, it's a great ballpark to go to. Natalie Gold, you know, she's playing the U.S. Open right sure there. Sure she is. Hills next sure. So they get her over there, and she throws up the first pitch. Bottom three, bases loaded. Preston Wilson to center. Rockies go up 3-2. Wilson drove in three in the game. Next up, it's Brad Hawk. And he hits one left side. Garrett Atkins will score. They wave Todd Helton as well. And the Rockies win big 12 fours. Buddy Bell loses in his return to Coors Field. Of course, he was with the Rockies. Now he's playing Buddy Ball in Kansas City. Doing well, in fact, but it's not in this game. They lost 12 4. Hated rivals, the Tigers and Diamondbacks, renewing their annual blood feud in Arizona. The bottom six, Luis Gonzalez to second, beats the throw on the double play, and both runners here are called safe. Placido Polanco, your thoughts? He's not happy. Why? Well, it's a good call here. Accurately called by umpire Bill Welke. Omar Infantes, that's a neighborhood play, but you're not in the right neighborhood. Not on the bag. Alan Trammell, get up. Two batters later, they are loaded for Arizona's Tony Clark. And Clark singles past Brandon Inge at third. Royce Clayton able to come in. That's a big run. We're tied at one. We're manufacturing runs here. The next up is Sean Green. Deep to center. It's caught for the out, but Gonzalez able to tag. He scores the second Diamondback run, and that's enough, even at uh, Arizona. Of the sporting week, the sports that are not top ten. We start with Thursday's Phillies Mets game, and former Red Sox great Doug Mankiewicz up in the eighth inning. Hello. You know, he kept the baseball after the end of the World Series. He's giving away the bat. Yeah, can't hold on to the bat. Fortunately, they put up some protective fencing over there. Uh, I get a number nine. Red Sox in his top nine. Two one pitch to Manny Ramirez. Now he has hit it, and of course, he's busting it out of the box. He's going to try to stretch this thing in for two if, in fact, second base was about 30 feet closer to first base. Oh, that's a, just Manny trying to make a hustle play. He is out by plenty. Love him. What's he thinking? Yeah. Yeah. Thought process. <laughs> Number eight, a Friday's Cubs White Sox game. Umpire Greg Gibson behind the plate there. Plunk, but he was okay. All right, number seven, Pierce Summer Session there at Florida State University. Frisbee class, of course, meets for two hours on uh, Wednesday and Fridays as they attempt to set a world record for most simultaneously thrown Frisbees. That's more than 600, and then there they go. Off they go. Now it's just waiting for Guinness to verify that's a world record. How about Omaha, Sunday, Florida, Nebraska? Just after a low fastball, lofts it into foul territory down the right field side. What a try by Ledbetter. It goes face first into the gravel. Land wasn't too good, but you know, on the dive and then the roll, that's stretching your face and everything else. The land would give him a five, but the effort, we're going to go ahead and throw a 10 up there. <laughs> Putting the lead in Ledbetter. Number five, Sophie Gustin, par 4, 18th there at the U.S. Open, and that's no good. That's all right. Tee it up. Hit it again, right? Let's hope she's not used to new golf balls because this one, too, big, big. Quintuple bogey, nine. He's talking small ball. Nine. Yeah, not good. Number four, Brewers and uh, Blue Jays Sunday. Lyle Overbay up the middle. Ross Adams overthrows it, overruns it, and then overthrows it. A double error on the play. Yeah, but he hit him in the foot, so he goes back and then one ball and no strike. The way they fall the <laughs> Number three, Union Square, New York City. It's hot. The kids like the popsicles. Oh, Snapple tries to set a world record. Freestanding ice pop, and it just it did not work well. 20-ton kiwi strawberry ice pop never stood up. Just melted, made a mess. Bounty paper towel business booming in New York right now. Oh, it's got that double absorption. Call maintenance. Uh, U.S. Open fought around Sunday. Charles Howell the third is third shot at number five. And you know, they got those goofy greens there. Yep, where if you don't get good. it exactly in the center of the green, it rolls off one side or the other. So now he's got to go over there and play that. Go bad for him. Right, so here's his fourth shot. But fortunately for him, he won't have to move at all because the ball, it's coming right back to him. He finished the uh, the open at plus 19. Ouch. Look at that. Nice white shoes. There we go. And number one, Tuesday, Wimbledon, Andy Roddick. Here he Vanek, and you see Vanek, although the match wasn't quite over. He's up there to shake Andy's hand, go over to his net, say thanks. 
good luck when you go into the second round.